there's something about those lower keys bonefish, pretty much what I have to do is nail the sun coming up to the tide coming up. There you go, baby! Yes, sir! Nice job, Tom. Ah! Oh, that was so cool! <laughs> and I was looking, you know, through the binoculars constantly, and I'm thinking, you know, how are they even up there? And there was that one little bowl. I mean, we got up there and chased those fish. They were belly crawling, man, yep. belly crawling. Look at him go, man. Look at this. Look at this. Yes, look at that guy. That is a shark. The biggest fish I've ever caught. Woo! I'm you okay, to relax. Oh, my God. K Saltwater Experience with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. Well, I'll tell you what, we got a beautiful day, a lot of clouds, and sometimes we talk about how the clouds are That's bad, but the clouds are bad if you're trying to see in the water. But what we're getting ready to go do is to try to see something that's going to be sticking out of the water, namely these bonefish tailing it. You know, I know that you are so familiar with the bone fishing in your area, but down here, the bonefish act differently. I mean, for us to go out in the middle of the day and find tailing bonefish is very rare. It seems like these fish, for whatever reason, are very in tune with, with the light levels. And, and we'll start fishing the light levels as much as we're fishing the tides here. You know, if it'll stay cloudy, it'll keep that light level right. lower, longer, and they'll tail throughout the, the day. I mean, I've seen them tail until one or two o'clock. Yep. You know, but it seems like as soon as that sun comes out, over. There's something about those lower keys bonefish, and I know it's not the case in, in your area where the bonefish will tail all day, but down, down in my neck of the woods, it's not really like that. I mean, maybe there's a couple of places here and there where they're going to tail a lot, but pretty much what I have to do is nail the sun coming up to the tide coming up, or the sun going down to the tide coming up, and they like that low light, and you get out there, you know, it's an early morning thing, meet for coffee, go out there, run to the spot, sometimes in the dark, and one, one of the things that we had to do there was we had to get there and kind of wait, and the tide was going out. And, you know, you were thinking, well, maybe we should take off. I would have left. I would have totally left. That's what amazed me is that normally when I'm fishing up there, because we, we have kind of a longer window of opportunity, and I went there, and, you know, and I was like, it's too low. And we're looking, and I'm like, you know, just land sticking up, you know, birds walking around there, you know. And then in, in, in half an hour, you could just see it just going up and up and up, and it's got that magic level, and you're like, here they come. My heart's racing. Tingling a little right. Oh, take your time. Don't spook them on the cast. Get there. Get there. You're going to find that. There you go, baby! Yes, sir! Nice job, Tom. Ah! Oh, that was so cool! <laughs> that was, really that was so cool! <laughs> nice job, bud. Look at that. Hey, get this other guy right here. I'll try. Here they come. Here they come. Don't move, don't move. I got him. Oh my god, he came off. He came off. Got him. There you go, buddy. Yeah, baby. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Set that That's what hard. I'm talking Set that about. Hard. I didn't get it in there hard enough. <laughs> this one? Look at that smoke and look at him going, look at him going. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want to get that hook in there. This is incredible. Oh my gosh, and he pulled the hook again. You know what we're doing? We're not getting wait, it out of the wait, grass wait. enough. I wasn't holding it up high enough. Oh my gosh. So exciting. Well, you know what? That doesn't even matter. That's the that best so part cool. of it. And if they pull the hook, we got to hook two there. Yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather hook two like that and see the whole thing come into play. God, that was so exciting. Man, my heart was beating out of my chest. I know, man, why still it? That was pretty cool. Wow. 
there he is. Got him. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience is brought to you by Suffix, drawing the line on performance. By Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. By Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. By Hawks K Resort, it's all about the water. By Quantum, fishing at a quantum level. And by Motor Guide, Strike King, and Guideline Sunglasses. You know, to us, it looks like and, and sounds like a flat, but to a bonefish or a redfish or a shark or anything that gets up there, there are little channels that go up through there. And we may not be able to see them, you know, ever, but they're there. And all of a sudden, you know, it seems dry here, but they're tailing over there. How'd they, how'd they get there? Well, they went up one of these little channels. So what I wanted to do when we got there is make sure that we waited for that quick tide to change. That's what I was amazed at is that, you know, when it finally did change, when we started to see a couple sharks and I was looking, you know, through the binoculars constantly and I'm thinking, you know, how are they even up there? And there was that one little bowl, that one little bowl. We were on kind of a dry area and we could see the fish tailing way out there, you know, and then we just kept working up there and sure enough, that's what you're saying. Is, is every, you know, if we had waited just a little bit, they would have been out of reach. I mean, we got up there and chased those fish that were belly crawling, man, belly crawling. But they were tailing like crazy. Beautiful, beautiful shot. There he is, got him. Get it in front of him. Nice job there. Slams. Way to go, man. Beautiful morning. <laughs> that was awesome, dude. It's just so cool to have it all come together. Well, to be patient like that. You know, the most important thing to that spot was, was our tide. And I mean, you showed me a couple things that, that, that I had did not know about that Lawrence GPS. I mean, we had the, the uh, um, you know, I, I've been using the, the tide information a lot, and that's crucial. But you showed me that whole sunrise, sunset thing, and then timing that with the tides. And man, that was the key to success. I mean, we looked at that to the minute, you know, to see that, that, that at, you know, six, whatever it was, you know, the tide was going to be, you know, low, and we'd have, you know, it'd start to creep in. And, I mean, if we hadn't had that information, we would not have had that great flurry. Make that Look at him go, away. man. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. They're fighting him for five minutes. And he's doing that. That was a fish I saw from a mile away. Thanks for pulling me a mile to get that fish no into the current. You're thinking about leaving. I'm thinking, no, you know, because of the information that I had gotten from the GPS, that I knew that uh, we needed to stay there absolutely and wait it out because if we didn't, we were going to I would have never it. have waited out. I mean, that computer, by having that information, you know, and being able to access that, as we're riding out there basically at 30 miles an hour, you're able to punch all this stuff up. I mean, if we didn't have that information, we'd have probably made a mistake and been there uh, half an hour early, half an hour late, and we wouldn't have had that great right. half an hour flurry of tailors right. everywhere. I mean, that was cool. Nice. Come on, big boy. <laughs> yeah. Look at that guy. I'm talking about. Very cool. Oh! Very, very, very Stop! Cool. Stop! Yeah, man. I love that throwing those Texas rig shrimp, you know? Beautiful, man. Really, really, really cool. Yeah, I bet he's, you know, six pounds probably. Huh? Oh, the blue line. How perfectly, you know, they're perfectly camouflaged for their environment, looking over the top of them like this, yeah. compared to that grass right there. Well, he was working hard, wasn't he? This is cool. Feel how cool this water is now that, yep. it, that it's changed? Yeah. The tide's changed? Let's see you, buddy. Look how beautiful. Thank you. Look how perfect he is. You know, that, that's something I always tell my clients. If you watch that fish until he disappears and goes away, yeah. you'll learn more about spotting bonefish in five minutes than you will in a week. All right, I'll push you around a little bit. Okay? Thanks, dude. That was cool. That was good. All right. So much of the fishing that we do in the Florida Keys is dependent on two factors. 
First, being able to accurately forecast the tides for any given day. And secondly, being able to coordinate that with the time that the sun is gonna rise and set in the day. I'm gonna show you how to do that with any Lorance unit that you're gonna have with an avionics chip. All you gotta do is zoom into the area where you're gonna fish. Go over to this small icon, which is a T surrounded in blue. You're gonna take your cursor over to the icon, put it right on top of it. And then when it gets there, it's gonna give you just a quick little display of where the tide is. But if you want more accurate information, you hit waypoint, it's gonna bring up this window. It's gonna tell you exactly what time the highs and lows are. You can take this out and forecast it to the year 2095. So now that we've found out exactly what time the tide is high or low for the day, we wanna coordinate that to the time that the sun is actually gonna rise. I can use this information forecasting out for the week, and I can also coordinate that with the sun and moon calculations. All I gotta do is go to menu, hit it twice, and I'm gonna go down here to, to the, where it says sun and moon calculations, right there. I'm gonna go there, and for today, it's gonna to give me the sunrise and sunset times. So what I can do, on the run while I'm running 30, 40 miles an hour, or if I'm thinking about it later on in the day, I can go to the tide and I can get an accurate forecast of what it's gonna to be tomorrow. If I'm looking for a situation where I need low light and low tide, I can use these two pieces of information found on your Navionics chip in the Lorance unit to accurately forecast when exactly I need to be there. You can use this to make sure that you're not gonna miss a minute of the fishing. And as you saw today when we, were, when we were going in for those bonefish, if we had been 20 or 30 minutes late, we would have missed the entire situation. So check out this Lorance unit with the Navionics chip and you can use the two pieces of information that I've gone over, both the sun and moon calculations and to accurately forecast the tides and coordinate the two together. If you can do that, you can take advantage of the same situations like we did today for the bonefish. Pigeon Key's recent history started about 1908 when uh, Flagler traveled down here and uh, saw the potential to open up basically the keys to uh, travel and tourism and uh, decided that he was going to build a railroad all the way to Key West. Before the 1935 hurricane, this was the maintenance depot for the Seven Mile Bridge as well as the Bahia Honda Bridge. So you had the bridge tender and the assistant bridge tender and their families that lived here on the island. Uh, and they were responsible for running the swing bridge here on the old Seven Mile Bridge, as well as uh, manning and operating the Bahia Honda Bridge. Then you had the paint foreman and the assistant paint foreman, and they were responsible for running the paint crews that basically painted and maintained both of the buildings. And supposedly they'd start at one end of the Seven Mile Bridge painting it, and it'd take them a little over a year to paint the Seven Mile and the Bahia Honda. And by the time they were done, they had to start all over again because the technology and the paint back then was nowhere near what it is today. So talk about job security. We have uh, eight historic buildings, all on the National Historic Register. These are the original buildings, uh, the original Dade Pine <laughs> cut out of South Florida 100 years ago. It's amazing. Uh, every now and then we have to do a little uh, modification to some of the buildings and try to drill a screw or a nail or something into that Dade Pine. It is like trying to put it in concrete. It's amazing. Many things in the museum. We've got um, uh, some flatware collections from some of the, uh, the old rail cars from the 30s, and a real extensive postcard collection, obviously photos going back uh, over 100 years. From, um, and there's actually some blueprints in there uh, that are dated in the 30s, uh, but the blueprints are of the swing bridge, so I believe it's a recreation of the original blueprints from the early 1900s when they were designing uh, the actual seven mile uh, section, and especially the swing bridge down here which no longer exists, but uh, it's, the drawings are, are, are very neat. What we're doing now is running marine science education programs for about 2,500 middle school and high school students a year. Lots of groups of kids are starting to arrive from all over the country to start uh, working with our marine science instructors. Pigeon Key is located uh, two miles west of Marathon underneath the old Seven Mile Bridge. So if anybody's driven since 1982 uh, down over the Seven Mile Bridge and wondered what that little island is out there, that's us, Pigeon Key. What, 
what I learned, you know, especially fishing there that day, is you know how short that window of tailing opportunity. I mean. I, I mean, I had never really, until that last week, I had never really hit the tailors that good in lower keys. You know, I'd seen one here or there, but a short window, or I didn't time right. And we waited, we had that awesome flurry of them tailing all around us, and then, I mean, it's like you say, split second, boom, it was over. And I'm like, what are we gonna do now? We didn't have that great of visibility, it was kind of cloudy, and, um, you know, we had to go to a totally different area. We moved to that, you know, those mangrove areas, that you, yep. you, that hard bottom. But, you know, tucked in that shoreline, the wind kind of picked up a little bit, you know, the clouds kind of came in, it was kind of a light issue. Um, but man, that was such an awesome environment. I never forget, it's different from anything we have in Alamada. We don't have white bottom with mangrove shoots and, and you know, I mean, it was so beautiful back then. It's funny there. because, you know, it's only maybe 40 miles away and we have so much of that in the Lower Keys. Honestly, where I took you probably wasn't anything special. It's just a spot where the tide was right and the bonefish were there. Eating it. I meet it. You can watch them eat it. Got him. Yeah, here, get up here and let me pull off you. Switch, switch, switch. I'm trying. Yes, oh, he's coming nice around job, behind dude. you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah. Ah. Again. God, dang it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. Some days, you know, it's just meant to be, and other oh. days it's not. And you know, some days, you don't do things right, and that's that's fine. Every nobody's perfect, and you're always going to do things wrong. But then there are other days when you not only do you not do things right, but then you have some bad luck. And I got to <laughs> say, we had a little bad luck, and it was one after another, just bam, 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 bam. I got it bit. Get him. Got him. God, he pulled it. No way. Oh, got him. Got him. Nice job, oh. dude. <laughs> Unbelievable. He's got it. Jack, jack, you got a jack. Jack, gum it. We're thinking, man, we can't go home feeling like this. We'll feel down for a week. And, you know, that's what I think that it, it's very important as a fishing guide to, to go fishing yourself and to realize that everybody makes mistakes. No matter how good you think you are, no matter how many bonefish you've caught before, everybody makes mistakes. And, you know, to put yourself in that position and realize how it feels. And I think you become a better fishing guide and I think you Absolutely. become a better angler. Tell you when we actually do get a hook in one, we're gonna have to be careful to get him in pretty quick. I don't know that we have have that much to worry about. <laughs> you may be right. I think the bonefish need to worry about the sharks more than us. Today they do. K Saltwater Experience is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. By Lorance, we lead, we find, you win. By Mercury, number one on the water. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. And by Thumbdinger, Navionics, Scott Flyrods, and Loadmaster. I was worried about you there for a while. You went on that, I mean, not that I didn't miss one, but I missed one, two, three, I think. And then I was like, all right, you go. And you get up there and you miss one, two, three, and then break that one off. And then it's like, it was like, I think we were going to stay out there till, till midnight. Oh, if we, we didn't were staying. Catch one. <laughs> we were staying. And it's about sunset and it's been a long day, but I was going to catch one. He's going to see it. He's rushing over to it. He just ate it. Let him eat it all day. Nice job, dude. Coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. Two coming of them. At you, coming at you, coming at you, coming Look at you. Look how fast I'm you. reeling to get, get that hook in there. There he is. Nice job, dude. Nice job. Yeah. Man, did you see him rush over there to that? Yeah, man. Good eyes. I didn't even see this. Fish. Great eyes. Finally, the bonefish comes over, and he's not the biggest one in the world, <laughs> and he's not the meanest one in the world, and he wasn't even the most difficult one to catch in the world, but he sure did make me feel better to throw in there, <laughs> actually make a good cast, and see it happen like it's supposed to. Shoots over there, eats it, whoop, got him, and uh, we can actually go home with, with some feeling of success there. Well, he behaved even exactly cast, like a bonefish is supposed to. He came over and just inhaled it. See one? No, I'm just trying to get out of your way. You're okay. 
I can come around if I need to. Pull. All right. Nice job. I want a power force right here. Yeah. Excellent. We finally caught one! Woo! That's a relief. <laughs> oh man, but look how we finally caught one, Rich. Barely hooked, huh? Oh man, he was barely in there. Even, did you see me setting the hook all that time? Yeah, well that's... And I never knew that I could be so proud of a tiny little fish. <laughs> but really, man, when we went through everything to catch one today, it was incredible. <laughs> Well, I mean, great, 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 great day of bone fishing, but just uh, hard to catch. I mean, we talk about making all the mistakes and uh, all the things we always tell our customers not to do. We, we made the mistakes. Too hard, this not was, hard this enough. This is just a research trip to see how, <laughs> how many mistakes we could make. You know, every mistake we make is one step closer to uh, telling our customers how to do it the right way. All right, just let him go. See you, buddy. See you later, Tom. Accommodations provided by Hawks K Resort Marina and Villas. It's all about the water.